All right, thanks for watching. And from the producer of F prime equals f comes another crazy special. Today, I will find functions such that f prime of x equals f composed with f. And you'll see, it's really, really neat. And first of all, as usual, assume f is a power function because um, trig functions or exponential functions are unlikely to solve this, in my opinion. So assume f of x equals c x to the alpha. And first of all, while the zero function does solve this, so assume c is non-zero. And then what we have to do, we have to plug this ansatz into our equation. So we have f prime of x equals f of f of x. However, f prime is just c alpha x to the alpha minus 1. And f of f of x, that is just, so f of f of x, so c of f of x to the alpha th power. And that is just c, claro que c, times c to the x to the alpha to the alpha th power. But that's just c times c to the alpha times x to the alpha squared. And that equals to c alpha x to the alpha minus 1. All right. And now, as is usual, we just need to compare the exponents and compare the coefficients. Now, now notice, since c is non-zero, this c cancels out. Do you see what I mean? And now, just uh, compare the exponents, as is usual. So alpha minus 1 equals alpha squared. And moreover, compare the coefficients. So alpha equals c to the alpha. And that will allow us to solve for uh, alpha and c. So step 2 now. Let's find alpha. So it's like finding Nemo, but this time for alpha. And for this, as I said, compare the exponents. So alpha squared equals alpha minus 1, which gives you alpha squared minus alpha plus 1 equals 0. And well, you could either do it with the awesome potion low way or with the boring quadratic formula way. Well, let's do the boring quadratic formula way. So then what we get is alpha equals 1 plus or minus square root of 1 squared minus 4, so square root of minus 3, over 2. Okay. And that becomes 1 plus or minus square root of 3i over 2. So 1 half plus or minus square root of 3 over 2i. Now, this might look very familiar for you from trig, because this is just cosine of pi over 3, and this is sine of pi over 3. So in fact, in terms of complex numbers, this is just either e i pi over 3 or e minus i pi over 3. In other words, in terms of the trig circle, we're either here at an angle of pi over 3, so e i pi over 3. Or we're down below with e minus i pi over 3. So alpha is either one of those two. And the point is, that's why we have to do it by cases. So that's alpha. And now let's look for c what that is. So now let's find C. So I've erased the equation, but I think you had something like um, uh, alpha x to the alpha minus 1 equals C x to the alpha squared, or C alpha x to the alpha squared. Now we know the exponents are equal, so that's not a problem, but now um, 
one if you plug in x equals one you actually get c to the alpha equals alpha now there might be many solutions of this and I'm just sweeping a lot of theory under the rug but since this is very hand wavy anyway let's do c equals alpha to the one over alpha so just take alpha root of this and the point is because alpha has two different values we need to argue in terms of cases so case one assume alpha is ei pi over three The cool thing is then 1 over alpha is just e minus i pi over 3. Alright, and therefore a c is just alpha to the 1 over alpha, which is just e i pi over 3 to the e minus i pi over 3 power. I mean, seriously, when would you take a e to the minus i pi over 3 power? Uh, definitely not in the real world. But then the nice thing is with exponents, you just multiply those exponents. So you get e i pi over 3 times e to the minus i pi over 3. But now remember, we're like down in the unit circle, so this is just e i pi over 3 times one half minus i square root of three over two. And then let's just expand this out. So i times i is minus one times minus one becomes plus one. So you get e to the square root of three pi over six and then times or if one plus e to the i pi plus i pi over six so you're left with e to the square root of 3 over 6 pi times e to the i pi over 6. But that's just cosine of pi over 6 plus i sine of pi over 6. So you're left with e to the, again, square root of 3 over 6 pi times square root of 3 over 2 plus i over 2. So this gives you C, and finally, you have your answer. Finally, what you get, a very non-trivial solution of this, is f of x is again Cx to the alpha, and that just becomes this horrible thing, e to the square root of 3 over 6 pi times square root of 3 over 2 plus i over 2 and then x to the one-half plus i square root of three over two. That was one case. However, the nice thing is the other case is almost identical. So let me just show you the modifications. So now, if alpha is e minus i pi over 3, then 1 over alpha is e plus i pi over 3. So you're doing e minus i pi over 3 times e plus i pi over 3. And again, you just multiply the exponents. And then you get, so e minus i pi over 3, 1 half plus i square root of 3 over 2. And then this just becomes, so minus i times i is still plus. So interestingly, this still becomes plus, but then this becomes minus. So e minus i pi over 6. And then cosine is still the same, and here you get minus. So therefore, here you get, again, uh, I think it's a, just a complex conjugate, but uh, you get just this e to the square root of 3 over 2 minus i over 2 and e minus i uh, square root of 3 over 2. And therefore the general solution, I mean not the general solution, but three solutions of this are 0, this with a plus, and this with a minus. And of course you can, if you want, if you have time on your hand, you can 
check it you know by hand but we don't even have to because remember we know uh, the equations for alpha and uh, c to the alpha and yeah, the equations for alpha and c so again those are, are our solutions and then if you want check that this works so I think step four Well, check it, but it's not very hard to check because you see, if f of x equals cx to the alpha, then f prime of x, it's c to the alpha times x to the alpha minus 1. But remember, we assumed that alpha squared was alpha minus 1. And also, we assumed that... Um, what was it? Uh, c to the alpha equals alpha. So just by reverse engineering this, we get c times alpha, which is c to the alpha, and then x to the alpha squared. But the thing is, we can just uh, factor out the exponent of alpha. So it's c times c to the uh, x to the alpha to the alpha power, but then that is just a c of f of x to the alpha, but then now the input is f of x, the output is c times f of x to the alpha, so this is none other than f of f of x. And therefore this is guaranteed uh, to solve this equation. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.